SABC News Presentation. Interface here on SABC3. My name is Tembi Samachele. So, there's been an outcry over the National Empowerment Fund's loan to Kanyitlomo's luminance, and some say it's a great deal, it's empowerment in action, while others say state funding should not go to those who are already empowered, or at least seen as being empowered. Now, tonight on Interface, we discuss whether or not government funding models serve their purpose of empowering black businesses. And our guests are Dumit Longwane, who is the founder of Muhao Capital, and Dudum Somi, who is the CEO of Musara Leadership Partners, join us, joining us from our Durban studios. And remember that if you want to get in touch with us, you can always do so by SMSing us your thoughts on 33726, or you could just find us on Facebook. It's Interface on SABC3. Let's get into it. Welcome to the studio, and thank, thank you so you. much to, for joining us. Thank you. This whole buzz around luminance. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading today in, in the City Press, the editor of City Press, Ferial Hafiji, saying that this matter shows that South Africans across the board are uncomfortable with black success. Is that really what's at the mm -hmm. heart of this for you? I think it's a few things. I don't think it's as simple as just focusing on one element, but your question is a good one. Um, I think it would be concerning that as a society, when we ask questions, the, the spirit in which we ask the questions should be such that it's clear that we just want information. Mm. Um, for me as well, as, I, as I've researched this transaction, um, it's become more clear to me that it's less disturbing the more information that, that is shared. So, but I agree, the spirit in which we, we ask questions, it does come across as if we don't want to see people succeed, if we are not the ones mm. receiving the funding mm. from the NEF, or if we've, if we've put in proposals and have failed to receive the funding, um, then we can't be happy when someone else has been successful. What do you think the outcry is really about, Dumi? Is it about the fact that uh, this is somebody who is seen as being empowered already? Or is it about the fact that this money is going towards the high-end retail sector, luxury goods, to be specific? I think it's probably all of that, uh, to be honest with you, and more. I think it also highlights for me an important aspect that this country needs to reflect on and kind of be honest with ourselves about that we're generally not happy with how empowerment has been rolled out in this mm, country. Mm. Um, I think that speaks to the core of the issue. Um, and we need to start asking ourselves um, whether the current policies in place are enough, whether um, the monitoring of those policies is enough, whether what has been done generally throughout all industries um, regarding transformation of, of this economy has been enough to address um, mm. uh, the challenges that we face. Dudum Somi in our Durban studios, you say that uh, you know, this issue has also highlighted the downside of being connected. You've written a couple of articles about this. What's at the heart of this for you? I think it is about the profile of the recipients, first of all. So we're taking issue with the recipients. Um, but networking, we network from when we are born. And it's really not limited um, to the profile you have. Um, so from when you are born, you sometimes inherit networks um, and throughout your life. So I think it is really about the individuals and taking exception to the fact that it is a high profile individual for one. Um, but it is unfair so because business and social networks intermingle and it should not detract from somebody having the credibility in terms of track record and experience to be in a recipient if they have applied for a loan. Mm. Are there racial undertones in this for you? Because at some point we had the CEO of the National Empowerment Fund having to explain that you know she's never had coffee with uh, Kanye Lomo and that they've never seen each other's children and it got to that level. Mm. Is there a racial issue here or even a, a, a sexism issue here? Well, the racial issue for me comes from the fact that 
black women seems to get forgotten sometimes that we still have three layers that we have to go through, regardless of your class and your education level. You have patriarchy, you have culture, you have stereotypes that you still need to contend with. So this um, transaction kind of highlights that even when you are middle or upper class, you're not immune uh, to those stereotypes, to the, the patriarchal issues that we still have. Mm -hmm. um, and it is unfair that a CEO has to justify um, that I don't have coffee with someone. You know, we have to look at the mandate. What is the mandate of the NEF? Analyze the mandate and see whether the transaction fits within that mandate. All right, let's let's do that, Dumi. Mm. The mandate of the NEF. Mm. You know, we did invite them and they did not avail them mm. themselves for this conversation, and that's unfortunate. Mm. But we're going to have to look at what we know about this uh, this this organization and what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. Broad-based economic empowerment. Mm. What does that look like? Mm. What's their mandate, really? Mm. I, I wish they were here to answer that question for themselves. It's a it's an important question. One I would I would ask them as well. Um, my understanding is that they are they are they exist. To to transform or to help transform an economy. Therefore, you know, if we look at just that as one element of their mandate, this transaction seems to fit squarely in line with, with what they're supposed to be doing. Um, for me, actually, it's a pity that this is the, the most amount, the first transaction, and the most amount that they've given to, to women. Um, to me, that's a disappointment if you're, if you're an institu institution that is about transformation when women mm. should be playing you know, a much bigger role in, in this economy. But development finance, mm. what should they be looking for? You know, should a transaction like mm -hmm. this have stipulations that say, if we're giving you 34 million rand as a loan, you should be employing mm. X number of people. Mm. You should be bringing in this much mm. to the fiscus. You know, mm. it, should it have those kind of uh, even stipulations uh, or limitations? Absolutely. I, b I believe uh, what they say they measure their transactions are on, besides financial return, are things like geographic reach, um, are things like women participation. Um, you will have heard that even for this transaction, they requested that they should be, it should be even broader than just the partners bringing the, 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 the deal to the table. They insisted on 10% equity going to uh, rural women. Is that enough though? Um, Is that what we're looking for when we are looking at uh, a country that's battling with unemployment rates of 25% plus and we're looking at uh, economic growth of now, what, 2%? Maybe maybe it's not enough, but are we looking at this transaction to be um, the one that transforms the entire economy? What about other transactions? Um, you know, why are we not asking what are other financial institutions doing about mm. transforming mm. the economy? Dudu, for you, the, the mandate of the NEF and in, in terms of what they're supposed to do, for poverty alleviation in this country, for employment, for uh, even boosting the economy of the country. Is a transaction like this in line with that? Well, first of all, let's just clarify. In terms of development finance institutions, they are there to accelerate um, the social development policy objectives um, in strategic sectors in, in the country. And they're also there to accelerate a thriving private sector. Because remember, part of why we even have a financial services charter was because our traditional um, financial institutions were not um, transforming fast enough in, in order to kind of give access uh, to finance to everybody. So that's a very important point. In terms of the NEF, their mandate is around black empowered businesses. From what I have seen from the documents that I have looked at, it really does not preclude luxury um, businesses because the one thing we have to remember, the Ndalo Luxury Ventures is an entrepreneurship venture. Entrepreneurs usually follow their passions. They usually do things that they're passionate about and they make money out of the things they're passionate about. So if you're gonna exclude upper to middle class black people per se, that means that you are actually discriminating 
from them forming businesses. Of course, just because you're middle class doesn't mean that you have surplus cash of millions waiting. It is a loan. It is not a gift. No, right. The loan has to be paid back. So the most important discussion for me is around black economic, economic empowerment as a whole. Mm. What are we saying in terms of black economic empowerment? Should we now segment black people according to the previously disadvantaged and the presently disadvantaged? Maybe this is where we should be going. All right. And so when we do that, we then have to address how do we ensure that the ones that are no longer disadvantaged still have access to finance when traditional institutions don't give them finance. Yeah. Okay, did we've got to take a short break, and that's a great question to, to take a break on, and that is, you know, how empowered is empowered? Mm -hmm. the, the previously disadvantaged versus the presently disadvantaged. How do we navigate that, and how do we make BEE actually do what it was meant to do? Give us your thoughts on our SMS line. It's double three seven two six, or on our Facebook page, Interface on SABC3. We have to take a short, ba a short break. We're going to be back right after this. Twilight body wash with fine fragrance that lasts for hours after you've showered. Just a little Lux. These are the most important things to know about premium life cover from Clientel. Our premiums start from 200 Rand per month and we pay up to 10 million Rand. Plus, you receive cash back. No medicals, no hidden fees. And it's a gift of love to your family. And they are the most important thing in life. SMS family to 47082 and we'll call you back. SMS now. Life's short. I want instant even toned radiance. Keep nourishing your skin and it will be truly spotless. Now you can have the best of both. The first ever BB cream from Pons is expertly designed for African skin. Gen Active Cover adapts to every skin tone while fading away dark spots to even skin tone from within for a perfect even toned look. does more for you, so you can do more. Dry Shield protection keeps you free from sweat all day. Now you can do more. Shield, it won't let you down. Welcome back. You're watching Interface here on SABC3. Just taking a quick look at some of your Facebook messages. Tidiso Mushresha says, Empowerment funds are meant to empower black entrepreneurs, but it seems to empower the already empowered people. And uh, we've got Johan Marais saying, The previously disadvantaged will stay eternally disadvantaged because the leaders that they put in power are corrupt. Not sure we agree with you there, Johan, but do keep, keep us uh, informed of what you think. This is what this platform is about. Yusuf Mali says, I'm unemployed and I'm from a disadvantaged area. I've been disabled since 2010. I'm an inventor. I've been trying to get funding and I have not been able to. So maybe that's where the, the gripe is, that there are people that are out there trying to get funding. But the question is, are there enough black entrepreneurs that qualify for the standards that are set by the development finance institutions that can actually access and have a return on the investment that's given to them. Mm -hmm. Do we have that critical mass of entrepreneurs that we need? Mm, I, I think it's a, 
it's a matter of the the funding institutions also providing specifically what it is that that they would require because it is like i've said beyond financial measures what else is what is it that they require so when you say broad based what is broad based how what kind of reach does that entail when you say it must create jobs how many jobs is that um, what should it what, be what, though? What, what kind of reach should it be in your view I don't know. I suppose you know there's some there's some merit in expecting that um, a transaction should be funded if it is um, employing women who are, for example, in the rural Eastern Cape, and it's 500 women. Um, but I think to to solely narrow it to that, it, it, uh, and, and and not everybody is going to be an entrepreneur that's going to be able to do that. Some businesses um, are small. Um, a majority of businesses do start out small, and we must encourage that because mm. that's what that's what our economy is going to be. But can, be can we on. justify a loan of thirty-four million bucks for? A, a business or a transaction that's not likely to create more than 50 jobs in our current economic environment can we really I think it's a it's a it's a difficult one to to say yes or no to it's not an industry that I myself am a specialist at um, when they say they're creating you know 50 jobs is that for, for how long is it now with a long-term view of creating 500 jobs and and to you and I 500 jobs might be enough to somebody else that doesn't justify 34 mm. million. So it's mm. very important, I think, as, as our other guest speaker has mentioned, to specifically critique transactions based on, on what their mandate is, because that's what we've agreed on. Does this meet their mandate? Does this meet the agreed measurement um, criteria? Uh, and, and going forward, is it something they're going to be able to pay back? Because it's not a grant, it's okay. a loan that needs to be paid back. Dudu, what should a development finance institution like the NEF put in place in terms of job creation, in terms of return on investment for a loan of this magnitude at 34 million rand? I'm not sure if I can prescribe for them, um, but we do have a number of DFIs. Obviously, NEF is not the only one. So the different DFIs are kind of targeting uh, different target markets in different sectors. Um, what's important is that there are developmental objectives that the government is trying to accomplish. There are strategic sectors that they are trying to push for, to transform and to also create growth, uh, such as agriculture, such as you know, um, possibly energy and tourism. And let's not forget, we are looking at this transaction in a one-dimensional uh, situation. This transaction, though it is a luxury good market, is also looking at bringing finances from the other countries within the continent. Because remember, those brands usually, the well-off on the continent usually fly to Europe to go and get those brands. We are growing a tourism sector in South Africa and we're encouraging people to come. It's not just business tourism, it's also leisure, leisure tourism. But do, we do, also have got, to have... Yeah, um, you've got the Southern African of, Tech, Clothing and Textile Workers Union saying this amount of money that is being given to a business that's not going to boost the local textile and clothing industry is not justified. I suppose in the long term, the strategy, from what I'm hearing, is that they're going to be producing. The quantities are not going to be huge. Mm. They will be producing some um, brands locally. That's my understanding. But I, as I think um, Dumi also said, this transaction cannot solve all the problems. Uh, so my concern is still going back to entrepreneurs follow their passions. How are we going to address that? Because not all entrepreneurs are going to get into ventures that have mass appeal, that target mass market, that are going to create huge jobs. But you still need entrepreneurs in the market of, diverse, of different diversity, different scale. 
But should and we not if say we do not on that deal point, with these contradictions? On that point, should we not say then that if you are um, empowered to level X, if you, if you make X amount of money, if you have a business that brings in this amount of money, you should not qualify for this, uh, the, the state funding. You should actually go to banks at some state, at some point. You should go and look for money outside of money coming from the fiscus. That's an important um, caveat to have. However, what do they do if traditional financial institutions, I am very much aware of different people who actually have assets, who have surety, who have gone to the traditional banks that we have and have not been able to access finance. What do we do with them? This is what we have to resolve. And I think that's a conversation then that we should look into. If there are banks in this country that are Absolutely. not giving funding to people that have the kind of credibility and the kind of assets that mm -hmm. the banks stipulate, then surely there's a problem there. I agree. I think that is, that is one of the, the biggest questions that should be asked that has not clearly been, been asked in any of any of anything that's been reported about this transaction. Rumi, our producers are listening. This is a topic <laughs> that we should be taking forward. The banks are coming to interface and they're going to be answering on this question. We have to take a short break. We're we'll back after this. Accident. We know that even the tiniest holes can lead to big problems, like big painful cavities. Mommy! New Pepsodent Cavity Fighter with 50% more calcium helps prevent cavities. Brush with Pepsodent's best ever anti-cavity protection for strong teeth and healthy mouths. The essence of man. It's hard to define. It's in the way he laughs. Or smiles. The way he seeks adventure on his own terms. In the way he kisses. Brute. And when he holds you close. It's in the way he smells. That's a man. Brute. The essence of man. Knorr Copper Soup has blended together the best quality ingredients such as lush green beans, crunchy carrots and the tastiest tomatoes so you can enjoy the most delectable soup with an intense taste you'll lose yourself in. Now, thicker and tastier than ever before. Infections are hard to stop because germs are getting tougher. That's why we invented new Lifebuoy Clinicare 10 for 10 times better germ protection than the leading hygiene soap. So why is it better? Because it has active natural shield. It's the same secret of how these centuries-old trees stay protected against infections. 10 times better germ protection than the leading hygiene soap and 10 times more skin care. New Lifebuoy Clinicare 10. Conversation with Dumi Songwane, who is the founder of Mohau Capital, and in our Durban studios, Dudum Somi is the CEO of Busara Leadership Partners. And we're talking about empowerment and what it actually means in the light of the uh, the, the, the deal that was struck with the NEF and the Luminate store that Kanyitlomo owns, and the issues that it's brought to the fore. What is at the heart of this? What is real empowerment? What does it look like? What are your thoughts? Do give us a line on our Facebook page, and that is interface on SABC3 or on our SMS line. I do see that lots of SMSs are coming through. Thank you for those. Do keep them coming. It's 33726. Dumi, what, what does empowerment really look like? You know, if, if we have somebody that uh, is like Kanye Lomo, mm -hmm. that looks like she's empowered, is there a cutoff that we should be looking at to say, you know, this far and no further for you? No, I don't think so. I think as a country, we still need to, we have a long way to go in terms of transformation. I think until we see this economy represent the demographics of this country, 
um, there's still going to be a lot of work to, to do. I don't think there's a sector um, on the JSE that we can say this sector is fully transformed and represents the demographics of the, of the, of the country. Whether it's at ownership level, whether it's at management level, whether it's at whatever other stakeholder level, supplier level, um, so from a procurement point of view. Um, I, I don't think so. And that's true for the textile industry as well, um, mm. even more so in the luxury goods uh, industry. So I think um, a, a transformation, we still have a, a long way to go. We're not at the stage where we can say, you have 15 million equity and uh, contribution that you can make, and therefore we consider you to be fully empowered. Mm. I don't think so. Mm. Do do for you, you know, we've heard lots of debate around uh, what BEE should be doing, what it should be like, what the, the downfall to BEE is, but we're not really getting headway or making headway into what we are supposed to be doing from here on out. Should we be saying broad-based BEE means that each and every South African gets empowered to, or uh, gets uh, alleviated out of poverty, and we can't do anything further than that? Or should we be saying that it's okay for one individual to actually get as far and as, as high as possible in one sector, like Kanye Lomo, if she wants to make 100 million, that's okay? I find some of these comments around black economic empowerment very in, uh, patronizing in terms of how we are seen as different from other race groups. Um, entrepreneurship um, is across different races and nobody puts a cap on other races in terms of how far you have to go. In terms of black economic empowerment, when you're talking about public funds, it is very fair that we scrutinize how the transaction happens. That I'm not against. I think that is very important. But let us not crucify individuals who are now doing well uh, that they are no longer able to get help, especially when other institutions are not assisting. Um, black people are not a mass. They are individuals. And if we're going to talk true transformation, there are many sectors in this um, economy that need to, to be transformed. And many of them are not targeting mass markets. But that's should, very important should, for us to know. Shouldn't they focus on, shouldn't public funds focus on poverty alleviation? Isn't that what we should be looking at? I, I think so, but I think beyond that, um, we should also, uh, as Dudu has rightfully stated, we should we should not be putting us putting a limit on ourselves. You know, um, we are teaching our children to dream big. What does that mean? That the the, the most your your child should uh, aspire to is not being um, poverty stricken. And if you're not poverty stricken, then you are you're empowered okay. and you're okay. Which is which is not right. Mm -hmm. I think we want to encourage our children to dream big. We want to encourage our children uh, to believe that anything is possible. We want them to be bold about what they aspire for and, and not be mediocre. And I think we need to continue to encourage that. And briefly from you, Dudu, last thoughts. What is the biggest lesson that we as a country should learn from this? I think we are now at a crossroads in terms of BE, and we need to address the tensions that are, are arising without patronizing black people. And the other important thing is we are understanding the complications that form around networks. Networks are important um, in society because no man is an island. So we do kind of have interactions, but not all interactive uh, interactions are corrupt and we need to be very clear in terms of what we see as conflict and what we don't see as conflict. Bill Gates himself had his mother open up a lot of networks for him to, to, to have a, a successful Microsoft. So let us not put uh, limits on black people, but let's address the tensions and people have every right. It's public funds we have to question, but let us ask the right questions and get to the right solutions. All right, let's leave it there, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us for this discussion. And I'm sure that uh, it will continue. We will hopefully come to uh, a point of agreement about what these development finance institutions should be doing. And, and other funding institutions. And other funding institutions <laughs> in terms of actually getting to the heart Absolutely. of what BEE was meant to do. Dumitlo Ngwane, the founder of Mohau Capital, thank you so much for your thank time. You. And in our
Durban Studios to Dumso. Me, thank you so much for your time. And that's how we come to the end of this program. Thank you for joining us. And do join us again next week at the same time. From me and the team, good night. Well done.